Hi, I'm Tommy Sims, director of Fuzzy Surf's music video, She Was Crying Sugar. It's a music video for the local band Fuzzy Surf from Milwaukee. And it's about two candied people, a candied couple, who lose their pet gummy worm and have to go on a venture through their candy land to rescue their gummy worm. And a lot of um, candied adventures ensue. I'll probably be saying candy the last throughout this interview. I enjoyed the, the video quite a bit. Thank you. Uh, I, I want to ask you a question, though, about the band. Do you yeah. work with this band a lot? Because I think I've since you sent me this video, I think I've seen two other yeah. videos you did with them. Yeah, we did a few videos for them for their previous album, Fuzzy and the Surfs, and that dealt a lot with puppets. Um, because outside of Claymation, I also do puppetry, too. I didn't build the puppets. Um, but I helped puppeteer them. And from there, uh, my friend Joe and I, the other half of Simwig Studios, um, we've been uh, kind of booked by Fuzzy Surf for the last year or two doing a bunch of music videos for them. And yeah, we've had a few come out since then. And we actually have a few more lined up after this too. And there's just like numerous films in production right now. So we've been busy, busy. How many uh, music videos have you done with them? Uh, off the top of my, uh, the top of my head, I want to say we've, done maybe five so far i think and you got a few more planned yeah 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 because they, ha they have a new album coming out this one was for their uh, other album sweet tooth which i have right here which ann volrath who did the sets um for sugar helped me out with the album too um if you notice on the album we sort of incorporated the set from sugar yeah, into yeah. it um, and the album was titled Sweet Tooth before we even got on to, so they had this like sweet sugary idea going before they even pitched us the idea for this film, so. Okay, you mentioned you work in a production company called Simwig? Yes. But you also have Out of Tune Studios. Yeah. What's the difference between the two? So Out of Tune is more so dedicated to teaching the art of stop motion alongside making films for a younger audience. And Simwig is more just a production studio and we're not limited by keeping things necessarily kid friendly. Not that we've gone crazy, but for Fuzzy Surf's video of Killing Time, it was a puppet going on a murder spree, so okay kind of so, like how mel brooks has his own thing with his comedy and then brooks films for more serious stuff too so, so you won uh last year at our festival best wisconsin yes. film thank well, you again we, by the way oh you're welcome we we actually enjoyed the thank you video you made too oh, it was a lot of fun um, getting done back in the laboratory so how long have you been a filmmaker in this area oh good question uh probably going on 10 years now Ten years. Um, wow. Yeah, because I went to school at UWM for really drawing and painting, and then I was also into theater as well. And then I discovered that animation combines all of that visual art with the acting element and directing and all that other stuff. And then from there, animation launched off into live action too. So I just kind of do a little bit of everything now. Yeah, uh, you even acted in your life. Yeah last film yeah do you act in your films occasionally too or occasionally yeah with the the fuzzy surf videos um there's a reoccurring milkman character that we actually did for a different band um lovely socialite their video glass centered around this milkman going around town who's kind of having a crazy day because he drank a glass of expired milk and um, one of the band members from Lovely Socialite is also in Fuzzy Surf. So when we did the first Fuzzy Surf video, they wanted a cameo of the Milkman. And he's just been oh. kind of popping up here and there throughout. Uh, the upcoming videos, too, that we have, I might be acting in some of those as well. We're just ironing out all the details right now. I really want to talk about uh, the animation of your project now. You are an animator, you are a filmmaker. But uh, what struck me was how much it was a love letter to the Max Fleischer area of an animation. Yeah. Um, and I, as you as we talked about in the previous interview for reanimation of the animation that yes, I am a huge Popeye fan. And um, I actually didn't have the idea to make this somewhat of a love letter to the Max Fleischer films. When Joe and I had the idea, we were going to originally have it like the Wizard of Oz, where a candied character is going down this candied road, meeting all a bunch of different um, sugary characters. And each of those characters would be played by a band member of Fuzzy Surf. 
And then Joe had the idea to um, have it be, I think the first film he sent me was um, Max Fleischer's Popeye meets Sinbad the Sailor, which is probably my favorite cartoon. Um, just because the color palette of that and everything too matches this Candyland thing. And yeah. Candyland has kind of been overdone too. So we didn't necessarily want to hit upon everything that's already out there. And we kind of wanted to, to make it our own. So we looked to those Max Fleischer cartoons for major inspiration for this. Yeah, I remember there was a Disney cartoon that was Candyland, I think really early, you know, in the thirties too, wasn't there? Yeah. 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 And nowadays all the kids are saying, oh, this is just like Cuphead. It's like, yep. Yeah. That's also inspired by the rubber hose animation style. Yeah. You even simulated Max Fleischer's setback camera style too with the yeah. E sets. Yeah. I enjoyed that. And we we animated it in that style too. So the camera was stationary and the set was set up on a giant table and we just moved the entire table along for any of the moving sets. Um well, how big was the space that you animated in? For the characters or for the sets? For the set. For the set, the table, it's actually behind you here. The table's six and a half, seven feet by two feet deep. Okay. Um, yeah, and we had, um, I think, a bigger piece of wood underneath for some of the sets to give it a little bit, a little bit more depth. Um, but somewhere around like three to six feet we were working with. Yeah, and I saw many of the gags or, or lifts from Popeye cartoons like, stretching a leg and walking across the way mm -hmm. yeah um, I, sn I snuck one of his twister punches in there too yeah so it was it was a really fun uh music video so we also looked to the early warner brothers cartoons too with the uh the looney tunes and their animated wipes um because with a lot of those action lines it's easy to do it with uh 2d cartoons because you can just draw all of those action lines and uh, it looks like the character's moving really fast but it was a lot of fun to do that with the clay. Just take the clay, stretch it, make your shape, place it behind the arm to make the arm look like it's going really fast. And you take your picture and when you play it back, the arm just whips past the screen and, and it adds that little extra oomph to yeah. Sugar Daddy punching a gummy bear or whatever the action was at the time. Did you want to talk about the, the characters and the, sure, the multi-plane sure. that I have hiding back over here? Oh, you do have them there. Yeah, they're all, there's there's for what's left of them is still sort of oh, set great. up here let's, yeah let's see them yeah so with the the uh, max fleischer inventions and early walt disney inventions um ann and i designed and she constructed this multi-plane animation stand so you can see the camera up here pointing straight down and we have three different levels that i can remove for whatever purposes to create a more three-dimensional effect and here i've got sugar daddy and sweetie set up and they're they're made out of clay, but they're also made with actual candy. So when we went into production of this, it was at the very beginning of the pandemic and everything shutting down. So say the hamburger on her foot, I only needed a handful of those. But because all the stores were closing, we had to order the stuff online. So I have like a box of 60 to 100 of these little hamburgers oh, wow. still left over. So there, there was a lot of candy lying around. Um, and in the background here, you can see the our giant gummy bear who yeah. makes his appearance at the end. Um, and that's a bunch of individual gummy bears that are melted together. And we have bags and bags of gummy bears still that we use to animate all of them individually. And as you can see, he's broken up onto different layers too. So we could um, animate different parts. And when you look at him from the top, he's all animated together. So yeah. the shot of him holding Sweetie in the foreground, that's that's all one shot. We did as much as we could in person. Um, so as I was animating these, I would send these over to Joe, who would then composite it all together so we could just keep the motion of the film going. And so it's three levels of there, right? Yes, all okay. against a blue screen in the background. And you just key in the background then? Yep. You mentioned you, you build a set, so you have to film that separately. Yes with with that that's yeah yeah so with with this film we use the dragon frame animation software and what's great about that is you can overlay all of the files on top of each other and see exactly what you're animating against so when the characters were walking along i could see exactly where their feet were hitting the ground and we would just shift the set ever so slightly just to make sure that they're landing in the right spot so okay. everything lined up perfectly 
So yeah. everything that you see in the film is physically there, either clay or candy. Um, and so, like for the peep, we did a lot of trial and error for a lot of things too. The, the gummy worm who was also over here, he's really tiny and you think that he'd be the easiest thing to animate. Um, so I, I tried to stick a wire in here to just move him around and help him hold position, but the wire would just rip through. And I imagine you probably saw the wire in there too, because it's almost kind of material. Yeah, so there's there's some shots where he does have a wire, um, because what we had to wind up doing to make him squash and stretch is we had to cut it up along the little ridges here and just add more or less to give him a little bit more shape. Um, and then for the peep too, um, that, that was another thing with with the peep. We were trying to find a uh, main villain for this film, and everybody was trying to think of what's a candy that people don't really like. And peeps kept popping up because originally we thought of having maybe like chocolate pterodactyls floating around the top of the the candy mountain or something but we we decided to go with the peep a little bit more colorful and funny a little unexpected too a cute little marshmallow chick is the yeah. the uh, antagonist of the film here um but with that too i couldn't just animate the marshmallow so i used the uh crayola model magic to build numerous peeps and for the different shots we had different oh, yeah. peeps and different yeah, shapes I, I like the design of that yeah thank you yeah. So, so these they've hardened over time because Model Magic is a air drying clay. But we, uh, when they were built, I could ant manipulate that, them easily. Yeah. Has um, Pete seen your music video? Not that I know of. I, th I think the band tweeted out to all of the the candy companies, uh, Peep Smarties, you name oh, it, whatever's in here. I mean, that's that's an idea with that they can even sell candy like that, <laughs> right? But <laughs> you you have um the characters there now the the facial expressions were yes. those were cg right no those were 2d animated so as you can see here on the faces if the camera will focus okay. um can you see the the black dots on their face where their eyes yeah. are yeah so i had those on there so i could actually physically turn the heads when animating and then once all of the claymation was done i with uh, marker and paper the old style way drew out every single facial expression and then animated that and then again sent those over to joe and then he could track those onto the dots on the characters faces oh okay that's how so, it's done yeah because we wanted been, yeah we wanted to make it as authentic as possible to i guess the time period where this could have come out in the the early 1930s or something like that yeah i just assumed it was probably cg because everything's cg nowadays yeah yeah, no, we, we do a lot of practical stuff around here still, so keeping That's it alive. Great. Yeah, it gives That's it a completely great. different look, too, and you'd, you'd be able to tell. There's little minor inconsistencies with something that's hand-drawn compared to something that's just perfectly smooth and CG, so it gives it a little bit more life and character. Yeah, it was, it's, uh, I really enjoyed that video. I mean, it, it's not only the, the, the influence of Max Flesher, who I also have an appreciation for, but just the color uh, yeah just uh the whimsy of it you know yeah definitely uh going into your bio here it says that you you taught around the u.s and yes and now you teach online with your out of tune studio too yeah um with uh the teaching across the u.s um through college my animation professor tim decker was a guest star on Mark Kistler's Imagination Station, which I just adored growing up, and he was kind of my inspiration to get into art and drawing and everything. So I actually met Mark and found out that Mark was teaching art camps, and then he brought me on as a claymation and then puppetry instructor for the last eight to ten years. I lose track of how long it's been, but it's, wow. it's been a lot of fun. We've hit up um, Houston, Texas, and Albuquerque, New Mexico quite a bit over the years. God, you travel a lot, and you make a lot of stuff, too. <laughs> Well, thank you so much for doing this today. Tom. Thank you for having me. And um, do you have any final thoughts on your film? Um, I have enough candy that we could make a sequel eventually. <laughs> they didn't necessarily fully get rid of the peep. Spoiler alert, I guess. Um, so that's that's still out there. <laughs> Great. But but yeah, I'm looking forward to doing more practical claymation in the future, and I'll uh, send it your way when uh, when we've got it. Oh, we would we'd be happy. We we actually have a lot of animation this year. I've seen, yeah, I'm excited for it this year and to have it in person again. It's gonna be yeah. really fun. Great.